What's up, snake fans? Dave Palumbo here with Muscle Serpents Daily, and I got my beautiful female anaconda, Annie Hall, here. That's right, Annie Hall is getting big, has never eaten a single rodent. This is all on chicks. That's right, she eats a chick every week, and she's growling. That just goes to show you that these, these snakes in the wild do eat birds. That's what they eat when they're young. They don't usually switch over to rodents until much later, so they get bigger and then they can get bigger prey. So she's growing really nice. She's a sweetheart. Um, you know, I'm really liking her now because, you, know, you know, she's been very slow grown, but she's getting thick and she's growing and she's very social. Um, I've had her since she was one day old, essentially. I got her from my good friend, um, Bob King. And he brought over a whole litter. I handpicked her. I really liked her a lot. I liked her pattern and I just liked the way she looked. I liked her temperament. And so I'm growing her, slow growing her up. You know, I might get a male for her at some point. I guess I probably should, right? Cause you gotta, God forbid we just have a, uh, an animal as a pet. <laughs> we don't breed them, right? <laughs> you gotta propagate the species, right? So anyway, today uh, we're gonna go into the snake room and we're gonna take a look and see, you know, just some cool projects. I think I'm gonna look at the, uh, one of the boa projects I produced this past season. I, um, I do have those snakes actually listed. It's my blood and hypo blood that are power het and also het for Annery 2. A really cool project, you know, I, I'm really into the Paradigm Blood project and I, I love Paradigm Blood, you know, which is a double, technically a double recessive, blood being recessive and then Paradigm is kind of like a, 50% of it is 100% head sharp albino, 50% of it is 100% head boa woman caramel, you mix them together, you get Paradigm. So Paradigm Blood I love. Um, what I don't have in my Paradigm Blood project is the hypo gene. So I would love to do a power glow blood. So this project was um, was a boa project that I had bred a pet my paradigm blood male to um, a snake that gave me this, which is my hypo blood from Vin Russo. Um, excuse me, let me correct myself. It was the snake I produced from Vin Russo's uh, babies, but it was my. Uh, plasma, which is my hypo, possible super hypo. I think she's a hypo. Um, Annery 2 blood, okay? So it's an Annery 2 blood, which is a pl which we call a pewter, really. And then you add hypo and you create a plasma. So really cool looking female. Um, we bred her to the Paradigm blood and we produced, well, obviously they're all bloods because everything was, you know, the parents were both blood. 50%, they're all going to be 100%, uh, excuse me, Het for Annery 2. Uh, some of them were hypo, some are not hypos, because uh, only the mother was hypo, oh, excuse me, only the yeah, mother was hypo. And now we obviously have that, obviously the power het, so we don't know if it's gonna be either 100% het sharp albino or 100% het bow and caramel. It's gotta be one or the other. So we got some cool babies. I've sold a bunch of them already. Um, I have my two holdbacks, I'm holding back. I can't hold back everything, as you know. I'd love to hold back everything, but can't. I fall in love with these baby bows. I don't want to let any of them go, but some of them are still available. So we're going to take a look and see that, uh, what's going on with that litter. And we might look at one more. So let's take a look at what's going on. Right, Annie Hall? Bring them in. All right, just in case I confuse you guys with my explanations, because I know there's a lot of genes going on there. This is my plasma. This is the hypo, possible super hypo. I think it's hypo, as I said before, blood. But then we remove the blood by putting the Annery 2 gene. Aneuthoristic gene removes the red, and we get this gray snake. When she was born, she was like really steel gray looking. And once again, if the Annery gene wasn't here, she would be jet red, you know, really complete saturation of red. And she's got a very, very faint pattern on her, which is kind of cool, and a really nice head. She almost has like a, an IMG looking head to her. She's got a lot of darkness in there. Very cool female, and we bred her to uh, with a Paradigm Blood. I'll show you that male. He's breeding right now, a really nice female. And we produced the litter I'm gonna go show you in a second, so. Here's my Paradigm Blood male breeder. He's a real stud. He's produced a bunch of litters for me over the years. Produced him in 2017. He's one of my favorite boas. I, lo I mean, love his tail. I love everything about him. I mean, he's just the epitome of a paradigm blood, really light, light coloring, good breeder. I got him in with a scoria here. Hopefully she'll breed. She's 
I don't know, she's she's small, she's stubborn, we'll see. I've seen them lock, I don't know if we're gonna get anything. Um, we, I bre tried to breed her last year too, and we didn't really get success. She was a little on the younger side, but we'll see. Um, you never know. I got him in with two girls this year, so we'll, we'll see how he does. But this, this is the father of the litter I'm gonna show you. So we went Paradigm Blood to Plasma. Let's see what we got. All right, here's a beautiful hypo blood that's parahet. That means it's either 100% het for boa woman caramel or 100% het for a sharp albino. We don't know. We got to breed it out. Beautiful striping on it. It's also 100% het for anery too. So we could produce, if you breed uh, one of these with uh, something that's the, exactly the same as it, we could produce some super hypo, you know, paraglow bloods. We could even produce some, I don't even know what you would call them, the anery too. I guess you would call them super plasma bloods, which would probably be a really, really light gray looking snake. Probably be really kind of cool looking. This girl is actually sold to a good friend and customer of mine. So she's not on the market, but she's just an exquisite example. If you guys want to be able to identify blood and you're not sure, Look for that black eye. That black eye is blood all the way. And when you have the hypo gene, you usually have the weird aberrant saddles. They're all spread out. And you can see that striped tail. So this is uh, for sure hypo blood. And once again, para head, 100% head, hattery too. Here's another one. This is another hypo blood, para head, 100% head, hattery too. Also another beautifully super saturated with red. Look at that black eye. Once again, all these babies are gonna be bloods. Some will be hypo blood, some will be just blood. They're all power het and they're all anery type two, 100% het. So another really, really nice looking female here. Um, this one has more of that disappearing looking pattern to it. And this might be the one I sold actually. <laughs> I, I saw one of these hypo females. I gotta really mark them down. But um, really, really nice babies. They're growing really nice and developing really nice. I'm really happy with how they're looking, which makes me want to keep all of them, of course, but can't do that. Don't have enough space to do everything. I'm already holding back way more than I should. But you guys know, if you guys breed boas and, and bull pythons, you know, it's, it's hard to let this stuff go, especially the, the high-end stuff. Let's take a look at some uh, males that don't have the hypogene. All right, now this male is super, super nice. He's blood. Look how dark he is. He's got the black eyes, of course. I don't believe that there's a hypogene in this guy because look, he's much, much darker blood. I actually like him. Actually, he's got he's got a lot of contrast and and cool stuff going on. I, I would call him probably just blood para het, hundred percent head anery too. But he's you know he's got a lot of aberrancy in his pat and his uh, saddles though. But you know, that could just be the blood. Blood alone creates, you know, um, weird saddles. So it's, when you combine it with hypo, you get a little bit more kookiness, but you can see that he's got a lot of his saddles that are pretty normal, and then he's just got that crazy striped tail. So once again, beautiful, beautiful snake. And this is one of the males from the litter. Um, I really like him a lot, actually. He'll probably sell pretty quickly. You know, what I find is that when I do a lot of the boa stuff, they sell usually at, at a year old, people are starting to say, okay, I, I, I want to get a snake that, that already has like a year on it so that it's that much closer to breeding. So people wait. But when you wait, you, you wind up, you know, you lose the best pick of the litters, you know, so it, that's not always the greatest you know, idea as well. I'm kind of like of the Tom Burke camp. You know, I'll let my customers take the best stuff and I'll, you know, as long as the genes are there, I don't necessarily have to have the best one. Although I, I usually, you know, if, it, if something's exquisite, I'll keep it. But sometimes the, the ones that don't even look the best turn out to produce the best babies. And, you know, I used to breed Persian cats years ago, and, and that's the same with, with them. You know, you would produce, you'd get the greatest looking male and you'd produce a litter. And the kittens wouldn't even look that good. And then you, you breed them back to the parents, usually the father back to a daughter. And man, you'll get stellar, stellar kittens. So... Sometimes it skips a generation too. So that's why sometimes you give away a snake and you think, oh, it's not really that great. And then it produces outstanding, outstanding babies. Here's my male holdback. I'm gonna probably keep from this litter right here. 
he's a hypo blood, of course, and he's power hetton, 100% head anery too. He's got the full striping on his body. I, I just can't let him go because he's just really, I like the full striping. I'm, I'm really, I got to tell you, that kind of got me. If, it, if I didn't see the full striping, I probably wouldn't keep it, but I really like this, the red saturation of his head too. He's got a lot, a lot of red in him. And once again, that hypo gene will really bring that out. So stellar, stellar baby. And uh, looking forward to seeing what he's going to produce in the future. This will probably be my whole back female. This is a hypo blood parahet. And of course, 100% head anery too. Once again, almost full striping. But then she's got these cool looking like little tail, like break up, t broken up tail. I just, and I just like her red saturation. I like her head too. Really, the head is what sold me on this, this girl. She's got a lot of like darkness in her head, which is typical of the, of the blood gene. But usually when you get the hype on there, you don't have it. And I like that really, I like that, that cross, the little cross spear on her head. That really looks nice too. So I'm going to probably keep her back as well. So those will probably be my two holdbacks. Once again, the whole litter came out really, really good. And of course, the hypo bloods are going to be more expensive than the bloods, but there's a lot of potential here. I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff you can produce with this litter, and that's why I try. I'm trying to do a lot of like unusual crosses with my boas, not necessarily to produce crazy visuals, but to produce the potential to produce crazy visuals down the road. So I don't mind doing double hats and triple hats now because I think that eventually, you know, three years, four years down the road. There's going to be some insane looking visuals produced from these these pairings that i've been doing and once again just a really really cool snake and here's another little bow that i'm just going to tease you with a little bit i had also bred the paradigm blood to a russo red pastel hypo sterling this past season and i produced uh four females in one male it was a small litter obviously i'm going to keep the male back these are triple hats they're hypo Het for Sterling, which is the patternless boa. Parahet, which means they're either 100% sharp albino or 100% boa woman caramel. And then, of course, they're also 100% het blood. So we got a triple head here. Imagine what a patternless paradigm blood would look like. Think about that. That would be amazing. So the saturation of red and then with the, the Russo red pastel line in there. Oh, my God. Anyway, so I have four females, so here's the deal. I'm gonna release two of the females. I'm gonna keep two females in my male. I'm going to release one of the female, one or two of the females, probably two. And then I'll probably do a repeat breeding to produce more males. The females have to grow for three years anyway, at least. So if anyone wants to get in on this project and grab one of the, the females this year, you hit me up. I'm not even gonna list them on Morph Market. If no one Responds, I'll keep them all. I don't care. Because I think that this, the sterling that will be produced from this triple head, if, if we ever hit a visual on that, is going to be astounding looking. Astounding because of the Russo red plus the hypogene plus the blood plus either we could get a paradigm, we could get a, um, a, sm a sharp albino or a boom caramel, you know, depending on what the comb what lines up and what these heads work out is. That's why I almost want to keep all of them, but I will release two of them probably. Here's two right here that could possibly go. Hit me up if this is something, a project that you guys want to get into. It's something very unique, obviously, and it'll be a long-term project, but it could turn out to be something amazing. And like I said, a lot of people don't really, you know, there are a lot of people who are working with the Sterling Project who see the potential of it, but I think this is where it lies in trying to really bring out tremendous saturation and contrast, even though there's no pattern, there is some, some striping that kind of differentiates. And I showed you that in a video the other day. So once again, little sneak peek. If anyone's interested, hit me up and get involved in this crazy project that is going to be years down the road, but could be something seriously unique if you want to get into a project that no one's really done. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today here at Muscle Serpents Daily. It was a boa day. We got to see some a cool, cool clutch. Paradigm blood, the plasma. We got babies. Probably half the clutch has been, or I should say litter. Boas are litters. Pythons are clutches. Half of the litter has been sold. And 
two of those are going to be my holdback. So we have about four left or so, I would say. So check them out at Morph Market or hit me up directly if you want me to give you some insight on what I suggest you do as far as if you want to put a pair together, male and female. We still do have pairs available. That's probably the best way to go. So you have all the genes, you know, that can link up with each other. You bring them together and you can produce what I'm trying to do, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring them together, male and female, and try to, you know, hit the, uh, the, the jackpot, so to speak. Uh, obviously, everything will be blood. Hopefully, we'll hit, you know, at least one hypo, you know, in there. And then, of course, you know, we're going to try to get that paradigm to paradigm, you know, once again, will it be a, a sharp albino or a bowworm camel? We won't know. But, you know, if one throws one, one throws the other, we can produce paradigms. And then, of course, if you if one in 25 chance of hitting the anary 2 gene as well. So a lot of potential, you know, if, if the female throws a, a, a litter of 20 babies, you know, you could hit one of everything, you know, if you really get lucky. So that, you know, that, that, that's the great thing about boas. They produce a lot of babies. So a lot of times, even when you have higher odds, you're going to have a lot of babies. The great thing is that everything will be blood and hypo blood, you know, assuming you get a, at least one of the parents with a hypo. Even if you don't, everything will be blood. And so you can't go wrong with that, those odds. So once again, reasonably priced. Hit me up if you want to get, uh, get involved in that project. Then, of course, the, the crazy triple head sterling project is going to be amazing as well, you know. Uh, triple het for paradigm which is going to be the bow with caramel or sharp albino we don't know what's going to hit on that one uh head for blood head for sterling so that's a triple recessive type of situation and then of course they all seem to have the the uh to some degree of the russo red pastel line which is a line bread trait some of them being hypo and some not so you got to check that out as well those two females are going to be available but not for long and if no one buys them, I don't care. I'll keep them because I don't mind keeping them. And uh, that's going to be an amazing project down the road. So, you know, the, you got to plan for the future with boas because if you only think about, you know, what people are producing right now, by the time you produce it, someone else is, is already, you know, producing something else that's even better than that. So these are projects that would have to be nurtured. And then later down the road, you can produce some amazing, unique stuff that no one else has been doing. And that's what it's all about, you know, trying to think about stuff that hasn't been made yet. And then once we make that, take that and take that to the next level. You know, look at where the ball python breeders are, which I am one of them. You know, so much further along gene stacking wise, of course, because it's easier to breed. But ball pythons, they seem to go a little more easily. But think about it. They started a lot, you know, sooner. The ball python breeding morph, at least the morph breeding, has really hasn't been around quite as long. And I think we're starting to catch up now and, and produce some amazing, amazing stuff. There's a lot of great boa breeders out there that... You know, when I see their stuff being produced, I'm like, I got to get it. I got to get it. I got to get it. So the future is, is very bright for the boa breeding business. And uh, hopefully you guys can get involved. For now, though, we are uh, going to close up shop. If you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on your notifications. Hit the like button. And I'll see you back tomorrow morning. <laughs>